And welcome back to the Exeter Store Championships held on the 24th of January 2015 at the Clifton Road Games. My name is David Paterson and you will see me there sporting making news and my arch nemesis and rival, not much of a rival to be fair because he beats me every time, but that is Dave Hoyland on the right there sporting his World Championship map and his Leela deck. So this is a unfortunately common occurrence in pretty much every tournament I go to. It is unfortunately the, uh, the necessary evil that we generally share transport together to go to tournaments and so I tend to take the national champion along with me wherever I go and uh, this is not necessarily always a good thing. Also not a good thing is that Dave knows this deck inside and out and knows how to exploit its weaknesses. He helped me build it, um, he helped me test it and so as such he knows how to play against it. Um, so if you want a good demonstration as to how to play well against this kind of deck this would be a good game to watch. So he's going to first click down and put down Mr. Lee. And I've been getting a lot of mileage of laid out of Mr. Lee. Um, I've got another tournament to bring you uh, that we went to in Worcester where I get some really decent mileage out of Mr. Lee as well. And I've certainly been uh, thinking the card's been getting better and better. It looks like he saw a legwork which he discarded, but he's going to play the fairy down. Fairy very good against this deck. Uh, even if he goes tag me, which is almost pretty much a guarantee that he won't. But if he does, uh, it obviously helps against the information overload res and so forth. Definitely got a deal in hand at the very least. Possibly more than one agenda there. I'm going to play the manhunt down early. Not sure if that's right. I've only got six credits. There's a distinct possibility him, of him uh, scoring out here. If I didn't have any agendas in hand, possibly would have been a better play to, to play it. But um, I think I could be being punished here. You'll also see just off shot my uh, Ferrero Rocher army. Obviously, Dave being allergic to nuts, it's a weapon that I will use as appropriate, as and when. Looks like he's got at least two short gambles in hand there. I'm surprised to see him not using them. He's got an RDI. Okay, that is a surprise there that he's not. Oh, no, he's discarding it. Sorry. I do apologise. Uh, so I'll drop into a successful demonstration. Again, not a huge amount of chance, I think, of getting much mileage out of that against Dave. He's always very cautious and very careful to try and get his breaker suite assembled. And more to the point, in this meta, which was utterly dominated by Grail, that's really important. Um, you have to be very cautious and careful. And even though Dave knows my decks, he isn't going to take any chances, just in case I've done something to throw him off. Uh, you do have to be wary of the, uh, the Grail res. And boy, was there a lot of Grail today. Well, at this tournament, not today, of course. So, definitely, he's used Mr. Lee now already about five five times, I think. So he's going to short gamble, short gamble, take lots and lots of cash for path to turn over to me. Looks like I just drew up into a sand sand. Probably tempted to go and install that and try and bait out a run at the very least. I'm going to take another two credits. It is often the way of this deck, and it's not necessarily ideal, but... Um, it, it often does click for credits. It has the sweep sweeps and the hedge funds, and it has a successful demo and a couple of pad campaigns, but the bottom line is it's never particularly a cash-rich deck, but then the ice isn't hugely expensive to res, so I'm not going to res that. I don't know what it was, but uh, it couldn't have been anything too decent. He will take a tag from Manhunt, and then he will trash the, uh, the San San for five. No Desperado on the board as of yet, so it will cost him the full five credits. Uh, so suddenly it's you know two clicks and seven credits effectively to trash that sand sand, which isn't isn't too bad. It certainly takes away from uh, the value of those short gambles he played before. And uh, I mean again, I know Dave. There's no way he's going to leave himself with a tag at this point. It's just not worth it. He's got a lucky find there in hand as well as a Rex, a special order. Looks like he's got his breaker sweep pretty much sorted. And uh, you know there's I don't know of many runners who. Uh, like dealing with Manhunt. It is a. I, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to say I believe Manhunt is the best, um, the best current. And uh, yeah, I realise that I'm including that in the same breath as ELP, but I honestly believe that Manhunt is better, strictly better. Obviously, only particularly in the making news deck, but in the making news decks, obviously we're talking about ELP. We're only really talking about it in an RP deck. So, I I think Manhunt is stronger. In, uh, in making news than ELP is in, in RP. It's a very, very good current. So lots of money there. All my burst of econ came through pretty quickly. And I'm passing the turn after. Now my, my economic position is looking a lot more steady. That being said, I do appear to be a little bit ice light and I've got to be careful here. This can quickly spiral out of hand. Uh, as soon as he starts bouncing pieces of ice back, I'm taking real tempo hits to have to reinstall it. Although, <clears throat> the good news is is that he's fairly poor. Oh, oh, wait, tell a light. Lucky find. 
Uh, he's back up to being in a sensible way. Dave very, very keen on Burst Econ. There's also a double Siphon there, and Siphon is very much the, a double-edged sword against making news. And I've still got the double ice over our HQ anyway, but uh, he is going to use Special Order to find a Corroda. Negating all my wraparounds, which makes good sense. Um, but yeah, Siphon is a difficult one, because even if he, if he does get through, that's realistically three tags that he's going to have to try and deal with. Um, so he could Siphon and then clear three tags, but that's not great. Um, particularly not when I'm in a position at the moment of decent decent economy. Not too bad, anyway. Got a mid-seasons in hand as well there, so that's positive. Uh, I'm going to install, and I'm going to take two credits, or take one credit. I may have drawn as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's good. I've got the mid-seasons protection in hand. Currently, I'm, I'm way ahead of them on economy, even after that lucky find. Uh, so he's going to have to find some Econ fairly fast. He's already used a decent amount of it, so he's already used two sure gambles and uh, a lucky find. So it, this could this could go my way. The Siphon obviously being one of the key plays here. But as soon as he scores that agenda, he's going to he's gonna worry, and rightly so. He's going to play the Corroda down for two credits, leaving him with two left on the board. So he, he can't afford to take an agenda at this stage, and he's got to recognise that. He doesn't know I have Miss Seasons in hand, of course, but um, one has to suspect. Uh, he's going to Mr. Lee. Uh, looks like he saw a legwork there, I think, as well as a fairy. Not sure which one he kept. I've definitely got a few agendas in hand. I've got a B on, I think, a breaking news there. Uh, I'm not sure what I put outside of the remote. Probably a pop-up win uh, uh, pad campaign, which is indeed exactly what it is. And I'm going to draw. It's a good time to get pad campaign on on the board because he's not going to be able to trash it. Another hedge fund. So suddenly the economic position is swinging entirely in my direction. And I think here probably the right play would be just to install an agenda and try and score something out. Um, if only for the sake that, you know, okay, yes, I'd lose a piece of ice on HQ or, or the remote potentially, but I've got a chance here of scoring some real agendas. And uh, if he does go ahead and take it, then that's fine. Uh, he will, in fact, go and do that, so that's absolutely fine. He's already taken the one tag from the, uh, the manhunt, and I'll let him steal the breaking news. So that's uh, exactly what I've done. He knows now mid-seasons is coming. I would not put that agenda out there unless I had a mid-seasons in hand. Um, so he's going to run HQ, he's going to bounce, first, first of all he's going to bounce back the HQ ice. So that's the first thing. Uh, he's got a, you know, a full sweet out. Uh, he's got a tag, he's only got three credits, and I've got a lot of credits. He knows that the mid-seasons will hit. He's got no Plastrid on the board, and so now is the question of how do we actually go about and do this. And he's not quite sure, he knows the mid-seasons is likely. He's going to inside job HQ, I think. <laughs> Which is interesting. Or is he discarding? I'm not sure what he's doing there. Was that his last click? I'm not sure. I think, she, I think he's in. I think he's inside jobbing HQ. Possibly testing for the siphon. I've got a lot of agendas in hand still. I've got at least two deals. I, what I saw there from the camera. I'm not sure whether I'm considering resing this ice or not. It doesn't seem to be a lot of point. I think my concern, of course, my concern is here. If I don't res the ice and he scores an agenda, then he bounces back my HQ ice and suddenly I'm very vulnerable. I'm not sure what the HQ ice is, but it may make sense to res it and then not have to worry about the potential follow-up, particularly because I've got a lot of agendas in hand. So I think that's what my consideration is at this point, but I'm also concerned about keeping enough money to be able to mid-season him effectively. Um, unfortunately, what again, you kind of look back at these games and realise that I'm giving my game away a little bit here. You know, I'm, I'm showing to him that I have agendas in hand, and that's going to be a problem. Again, I'm assuming that's what's happening here. I, I didn't hear the audio entirely, but he's definitely got double siphon there, so... I'm not sure what happened there. I missed. I, I may have missed it. He's going to siphon. This is third click. I'm not quite sure what happened on that. I'm going to play a pop-up window, uh, which he will get uh, fine, so that's no problem. He will siphon me and take two more tags. So he's now going past the point of clearing them. 
And this is a really interesting play. So he is going to, and I think there'll be no surprises here as to guess what, he's going to siphon again, I think. Right, he knows he's not in the position to clear the tags, and he knows that the mid-seasons is likely. And so the play is to make the mid-seasons less appealing, in a way, if that makes sense. And so he's going to siphon me again, take away my cash. Suddenly he's ahead of me economically, so the mid-seasons play wouldn't work. And he's on five tags anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm happy to take that. I've got no scorches in hand, though. So if I have a double scorch here, obviously it would be the win with no Plasquid on the board. But uh, it's an interesting play. The problem now is obviously HQ is hugely vulnerable. I've just run up into another NAPD, so that's at least six points of a Jensen hand, which is enough for him to win. Um, I'm going to install and advance. So that's the NAPD, and I'm going to install. I'm not sure why I'm putting the NAPD there, actually. That's an interesting one. I, I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, maybe I'm bluffing out. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure why I've put the NAPD there, whether it's just because I've got so many agendas I have to do something with them or not. And I'm worried about the legwork. Ha! Huh, look at that. So there is the legwork. Uh, so you'll see the mid-seasons. He will see a deal, which will score, bouncing back the agenda. At which point I have to shuffle up all these cards and let him select again. And I think that's what I, w I think I was so focused on the problem of a legwork here that I I may have misplayed. I think I may have misplayed. He's going to run. He's going to see a data raven. So I think I probably lucked out there because um, the potential was that he could have hit a lot of agendas. I think I definitely got a Beal and an NAPD in hand there. So he's drawing up Mr. Lee. Obviously, uh, Manhunt's gone off the board, but I'm taking money from the pop-up window at the very least, so that's not too shabby. And we did a mandatory draw, seeing a Draco, which isn't strictly too bad at the moment. I'm not sure what's on R&D, but the Draco on HQ would seem to be sensible. Yes, he's got the Fairy, but it's only a one-time deal, so that wouldn't be too bad. I'm going to draw two of Jackson. First click. I'm looking to ditch cards here, I suspect, again, because HQ is startlingly vulnerable. I'm not sure if Perhaps making HQ a little bit more solid would be sensible. He's got a garrote in hand anyway, so I don't think it would have made a great deal of difference. But uh, obviously wasn't to know that. Although, you know, he has gone through a lot of special orders and a lot of breakers with Mr. Lee already. So in all likelihood, I should assume that he's got a full-time solution. A permanent solution, as it were. And I've got a discard. I'm probably going to take those agendas out of hand as quickly as humanly possible. And again here, really, it's a race for Scorched Earth. Um, so, you know, I'm drawing up four cards with Scorched. I probably should have just drawn up six with Scorched. Uh, sorry, with Drax Jackson Howard, rather. And just tried to go for the Scorched win. I mean, Dave equally here is you know, going through with Mr. Lee. And he's got to be looking for a Plascrete. He knows that that's the real game ending here. So he's drawn with the lead, didn't see anything, but he, what he will do is clear three tags. And so now suddenly it's a race. I take the mandatory draw. I just need to see two Scorchers and I've won. I'll draw two of Jackson, seeing more agendas than economy. And at that point I know that he's going to clear tags next turn and, and suddenly it's all over. Uh, I will hedge fund. And Dave is breathing a sigh of relief there. You can literally see him step back and, uh, <laughs> and enjoy that moment. Um, but yeah, drawing up the Scorched, I think, was the only real play that I had um, to be able to, to go in and, and take him out. Mid-seasons becomes a lot less effective now at this stage. Looks like I'm ditching another agenda and passing the turn. I've got one Scorched, I think, in hand there from what I could see. Um, but it wasn't enough. He had four cards in hand, or five, I think. So I needed to see. He's now cleared both of those tags that he took from the account siphons a few turns ago. And uh, it's back to uh, as, as you were, so to speak. So by avoiding the mid-seasons tag by... Account, yeah, avoided the mid-seasons tagging by account siphoning twice. It's an unusual play, but I mean, it worked incredibly well here. Incredibly well. A choice between Katie Jones and uh, a Dirty Laundry. I think he took the Dirty Laundry there. And he will play a security testing. Uh, he'll pass the turn over to me, I think. Yep. Um, so no scorches. That is unfortunate. Uh, I've got another manhunt there, which will do good work. He's only on three points, so there's still plenty of game to play. I'm going to draw two of Jackson. 
Uh, I've definitely got one Scorched in hand, as I've said. I've got an Astro in hand as well now. Um, but everything like Data Raven and uh, Manhunt turn back on now that he's removed his tags. They've become just as big a threat as they were in the first place. And if I can still draw up into those two Scorches, at the very least I'm in a good place. His eco economy isn't amazing. Uh, now it's a lot better. He's got the security testing and the Desperado out. I've got open remote servers. Makes very, very good sense. He will dirty laundry uh, into archives. Uh, I think he would then run there as well to tr try and trigger my Jackson, which I obviously will use because I've got a plethora of agendas. I think I saw a huge amount of them in hand. Um, and at the very least that then you know improves my odds of, of getting Manhunt to be successful as well. Um, I seem to have put four cards there, I'm not quite sure why. I think I'm just deciding what to keep and what not to keep. I'm not sure whether he ran the Jackson or whether he ran... I think it was three cards. Ooh, crumbs, I may have put four in by mistake there. So eagle-eyed viewers, get back to me and let me know if I cheated. I certainly didn't mean to do it on purpose. He just saw the Plascrete, which he keeps greedily, uh, with Mr. Lean. So now that the Plascrete's on the board, the Scorched Earth option's looking less likely. That doesn't mean that the deck doesn't have threats. Obviously, it's got universal connectivity fee. It has um, information overload. And just obviously the fact that it can trash resources is not bad in and of itself. So it's still decent punishment, and it has to be respected. But at the same time, with the Fairy on the board, there is a lot... Uh, less risk for him. Drawing up into an ODPD. I will res the San San and I'm assuming here score an Astro. So it's game on. Three points to two with the scored Astro. Uh, res San San. He's not flush with cash, but he's certainly got enough there to go in and break it. Um, he's got his full suite up, so to speak. Um, the, the Rex Breaker will certainly be enough at this point. He's got a zoo in hand as well. Uh, I obviously have to bounce a piece of yeah, This is what I always forget, is that you bounce a piece of ice, not just for when they steal, but also for when you score. And um, suddenly that sand sand is looking a lot more vulnerable. But hey, we scored the Astro, who cares? And uh, all three Astros are still in play, none have been st stolen. Um, I haven't seen many of them, I don't think. I've just seen all the Beals and NAPDs, as often as the way when you're playing the national champion and the top eight uh, world player. So it looks like he's just going to secure his test. I mean, this is this is how. I mean, again, this, this game has been a little bit fast and loose, I think, on both accounts. To be fair, but uh, you'll see just how how strong Dave's play is. Um, you know, avoiding that mid-seasons via account siphoning is a little bit unusual, <laughs> but it worked incredibly well. And he's now tag-free. Um, you know, I didn't see the scorches. So perhaps he got a little bit fortunate there, but. Uh, at the same point, he played exactly the way he, he should have, which was to uh, try and dig for Plascrete as much as he could, but then just think, ah, eh, whatever, I'll clear the tags. He had the money to do it. So Draco comes on the board. He's going to have to break, uh, use Fairy to get through it, uh, at which point he will trash the Sand Sand for a four, effectively, with the Desperado out on the board. But hey, mission accomplished. We've got a scored Sand Sand on the board, a uh, scored uh, Astro on the board. So all is not lost, but at the same point here, Dave's in a good position. He obviously is got an already he's got an already eye in hand, so R and D he knows is going to be rich and, and look at that, just as soon as I say it, that's exactly the the point where he begins to think about pouncing on R and D, uh feeling out the server. Uh he knows cards like information overload aren't going to be a threat to him while he's not tagged. Um Data Raven he can just bounce off of, so that's not the end of the world. Looks like he's actually going to hit HQ instead. Uh he'll see a quandary. Which I'll res because I might as well and start trying to use up his, his Rex tokens. I gain one for the pop-up window. Uh, he'll go through and access. Obviously gets one back with Desperado. And sees the Manhunt. I think only the one agenda in hand at the moment, which is the NAPD. Uh, I don't think I've kept the mid-seasons though, which is probably a mistake. Um, he will see an NAPD on, in archives. So I think here I'm trying to bluff out the fact that I've still got a mid-seasons in hand. But... Um, I'm not sure if both of them might be in there. One of them's definitely in there. So, okay, that's good. I, I wasn't stupid and did it with two in there. Looks like he's going to leave the agenda. Um, and he's going to pass the turn over to me. So, again, he's still worried about the mid-seasons. I think he'd be okay. He's got a lot of money still on the board, at least 13 credits. I'm going to install the Jackson and draw two, which I was quite happy to see. Uh, because I didn't really want him getting that NAPD, taking him to five points. 
I will definitely play the manhunt, and then I've got to discard something. I think I've got another manhunt on the board there, I'm going to discard that. Keeping my Scorch in hand, still only seen the one unfortunately, the deck runs three, but off on the way. Jackson Howard comes through sometimes, doesn't come through all the time. Uh, but Dave is very much ready here to go in and uh, do his business, I would suggest. And uh, he will security test, at which point obviously I will trace for him and give him a tag. And suddenly security testing becomes a lot less ideal. Um, you know, Manhunt is a great anti-security testing card. So I'm going to put the Sand Sand back in, I'm going to put the NAPD back in. Uh, I think one face down, which may have been the other NAPD I had in hand. I think I may have had two. And they just seem to be finding their way into my hand every single round. I mean, to be fair, this deck doesn't hate having NAPDs in the deck. Uh, unlike perhaps uh, an NEH deck, because with Universal Connectivity Fee, it actually can end up being fairly strong. I mean, the dream would be Data Raven into Universal Connectivity Fee uh, into NAPD, and um, that, that'll be a guaranteed score, pretty much, I would suggest. Unless you've got an App Man at uh, 2 or whatever it is. Uh, Rose the Draco at 1. Um, is he going to. I think he's going to pay to beat the trace. I don't have enough money to. Uh, do anything else, but that's fine. So it's a Draco in at zero. I'll raise a quandary, uh, which will break with the counter. And again, I just want to slap his counters up here more than anything else. So here we go. First R&D access. sees a wrap around, which isn't going to do a blind bit of good for me. And it looks like he's passing the turn. Still good on economy. Definitely ahead of me now. Uh, one for the pad campaign. And if he can stop me from top decking the Astro here. Uh, he's probably going to be in a good place. I need money more than anything else now. But astroing out the astro would would help. So I'm going to take two credits. As I say, this deck does often end up clicking for credits fairly often. It probably doesn't have quite enough economy, but it's that delicate balance between including enough tagging mechanic and enough tag punishment. Um, so the deck space is very, very tight, and the sand sands are an important include, as I've discovered uh, in later tournaments. Uh, I do take this deck to the Worcester tournament out in, as a matter of fact. Pretty much, I think it's exactly the same, in fact. I don't think I make any changes to it at all. Um, I hope to be able to bring you that coverage in the not-too-distant future. So, it looks like he is... is he special ordering or just discarding? I'm not sure. Yep, he's special ordering. I'm not sure what he's looking for. He's got pretty much everything he needs in hand, so this would be interesting. Oh, the Mimic. Oh, of course, that makes sense. So he can now break the Dracos for one each. And uh, that makes perfect sense, more than installing the Garot he had in hand anyway. And you know Draco is very very flexible, but you know you play it smart and you wait for them to actually res the Draco before getting that key breaker up, and suddenly it can look like a lot less better value. But to be fair, it's only one to res, so you know it's a great option. It's good account side for defence at the very least. Not that I have one on HQ, unfortunately. And uh, Mr. Lee has done amazing work for Dave here. There's no denying that for a moment. And uh, I kind of probably went into this game. It was a little bit of a mind dungeon. Um, again, I've played Dave, I think. This was the, th the third or fourth, I think, consecutive tournament that we we played each other in, either in the third or the final round. Um, so this is the penultimate round, and I kind of know at this point I can't afford to drop more than one game. Uh, I'm installing extra ice here over... I haven't seen any tag punishment ice at all, so that could be what it is. Or any Data Ravens. Data Raven is such a huge card. If you don't see your early data ravens, then I think you know you, you find you're going to lose those early agendas, and you're going to really struggle. I'm doing my best here to hold on for dear life and trying to maintain a decent board position. I've got res dice at least, which is a positive. Um, but the double account siphon has really swung the game. Uh, I'm not going to res that on HQ. I think it's probably the information overload. It could well be universal connectivity feed, but at the same point, uh, Dave's not going to to bite on that one. Um, universal, um, obviously, yeah, oh, scores the, the BOI. He's had enough picks in it, to be fair, so uh, it was always going to happen. Manhunt bounces, as does that piece of ice. He still gains the tag from the Manhunt, obviously, for the access. Trace 4. Uh, he will security test, which makes good sense. And it's just a double whammy there. Scoring that agenda not only wake, makes HQ weaker, but it also gets rid of my Manhunt, and... That's sad, sad, sad panda time. So it looks like I discarded the other manhunt as well. Maybe a mistake, but I think at this point um, it's largely irrelevant anyway. He's on five points. Got the information overload in hand. 
a little bit too little too late. I think I've just drawn up into my second um, mid-seasons, just in time for it to be completely useless. Oh, well, I guess I could use it, but he's ahead of me economically, so it doesn't really matter. You know, he's way ahead of me on economy as well. So, uh, yeah, he would be able to avoid those tags fairly effortlessly. And I think all it would actually end up accomplishing is just cleaning myself out, really. So it's just the last agenda he's looking for here. He's only had the one pop of R&D. He's had an R&DI in hand for a, quite a while now. And I'm guessing that it's probably quite appealing just to pop that R&DI down and uh, have a look at R&D, see if he can get that last agenda he needs. Uh, I've scored. Oh, I've got a breaking news as well. I'm literally what I need now is an Astro and possibly another Beal or another Astro. I could Astro train out with the breaking news in hand, but the likelihood of that at this stage is, I think, probably fairly slim. Uh, he's Mr. Leeing again. Very much a meta call, I think, you know, whether you go Mr. Lee or whether you go John Masanori. I think in this meta and in this tournament, anyone with Mr. Lee in their decks was probably laughing. I think it's a lot stronger than Masanori over the course of the game. And uh, dropped the mid-season, such as in case he wasn't sure, he's going to install a fairy. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mr. Lee is just brilliant against these kind of decks that do, do take a little while to get going. Um, can't just suddenly fast advance their way to, to glorious, glorious victory. So, yeah, I think... Uh, Again, it depends if you're expecting lots of NEH, you probably want Masanori in the deck, but against everyone else, uh, Mr. Lee, I find, does better work. Uh, and this tournament was definitely a Glacier-style tournament. A lot of RP, a lot of Grail, and not a huge amount of fast advance, though the fast advance that was there did quite well. It's funny how, uh, how different metas are in that sense, because uh, I can tell you one thing for nothing, Worcester was completely different. So he's going to run the pad campaign. Bit of surprise. Uh, oh, he's going to security testing the pad campaign, of course. Sorry, do apologise. Yeah, complete waste of ice there. I'm not sure what I was thinking. He's going to legwork. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got an agenda in hand. I think I probably do. I've got the breaking news at the very least, but it wouldn't win in the game. And uh, this could be it. This could be all over. Let's have a little look and see what he gets. Sees the beal, so I did have a beal in hand as well. Uh, Scorch and another NAPD which you've been able to score. So I had three agendas in hand as well there uh, and the two Scorches but n not enough to, to see out the game. Um, and again Dave from a very late position there was able to dominate me with a, a decent break of sweet and uh, able to put the pressure all across the board. So uh, very well played there by Dave. Uh, kind of an expected loss in that sense. Drawing up for the Scorched Earth was the only real point I felt where I could have taken the win. And uh, it just wasn't to be, but uh, there we go, that's the power of uh, Leela Patel, ladies and gentlemen. Um, something hopefully we'll see more of as these tournament cards progress. In the meantime, do please go and visit us over at netrunners.co.uk. Uh, we've got forums, articles and more. Come and have a chat with us, and we'll see you for the next cast shortly.